I'll let you figure it out. I mean, he ride, he would ride my back. You sure good married man, good Lord. You see, I'm telling you, brother, after you taste the fruits, I'm like, what? He said, the fruits, man, the fruits. I said, so what gonna happen to me? He said, I'm telling you, you're gonna become weak. You won't take a stand on the word of God. He said, I fear for you. I said, all right. I told him, you don't know me. After I got married, time passed. He came to me. What you get married for? You don't got worse since you've been married. You preach harder than you ever did now. Go back to be a single man. Change it up now. Anytime God make you a preacher and marriage change you, you never was a preacher to begin with. 25 years, what they call it? Silver anniversary? 09, we'll be celebrating 09. Every place. What God done for all of us. I thank God for you that been here for the whole 25 years. I thank God for you that been here 25 days. I'm glad for you that been here for 25 minutes. <laughs> I want to see, I want to see our young people that have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ receive this Holy Ghost. Amen. It's time that you young people that have been baptized to really start thinking about receiving the Holy Ghost. And what I mean by that, you must start really seeking the Lord. Young, middle age, old. If you've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, it's time for you to really start seeking the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't take it for granted. Because if you look at life itself, it seems like the life expand of a young folk is shorter. The old is walking the young to the grave. My visitors that may not have been baptized, have never repented, never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Smoking, drinking, and gambling, you know, doing your thing. I mean, many of us years ago, we would never think we'd be sitting in the church on some New Year's Eve. Be out partying, wouldn't you? Or drinking or drunk. Or leaving one party going to another. Or getting a mug shot. <laughs> God is the best thing for you. The wonder from God, all of us would be in a mess. Amen. That's one of us. So, you that are just baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you that have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, it's time for you to start considering your ways. Don't walk around here for granted. Being caught up in this modernistic world like there's nothing else around you. You got one life. Don't blow it while you have it. Don't get so caught up and distracted with friends, job, career, college, and all that other stuff. Uh-uh. God must be at the top of the agenda. It's a must. Not second, not third. God must be at the top of the agenda. Don't ever forget that. You walk around here like there is no God in Israel. You got life only because God lent it to you. Question is, how long he gonna let you borrow it? Don't look at your age and think you got a long life because you're young. No. You're only on borrowed time. And you judge yourself what you're gonna do with this borrowed time. We're going to go ahead and let you go. And I pray that everyone have a safe trip back home. Yes. To you to have services on Thursday night. Well, service later on tonight. Yes, sir. You to have the temples Friday night. Sunday is the first Sunday of January. What is it? January what? Third or fourth? Third? Fourth. Hmm. All right. January fourth. First Sunday Wow, of 09. God willing, I'd be in Philadelphia. The new schedules are here from January to April. Also for what would be taking place throughout of 09. Anyone here didn't get the new schedule? Raise your hand. Anyone didn't get it? All right, anyone, you that have it, brothers, please give it to all of those. Keep your hands up, please. We want everyone to get it. Keep your hands up. One brother work one side, one brother work another side. Kind of kill some time, sir. Huh? All right. 
If there's anybody here who want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and obey God for once, stand on your feet. One, two, anyone else? Three. All right, Kenneth and Taj, take the brothers, get them ready. Come on, brother, let's get them ready. You brothers, follow them brothers. Follow them. Take them down in water. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't leave the brother behind, Kenneth. Got another one up here. Anybody else? Without baptism, you cannot be saved. Nobody. You got water right back there. Clothes also. Baptize you and put you on the right track. Start your year off right. Amen. Well, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. Just keep working on the leaf you got. All right. That's all. That new leaf stuff, don't worry about that. Work on the leaf you have, because I guarantee you there's a whole lot more to it. Sunday, we'll be in Philadelphia. If you look on the schedule, there's only two places that I'm going to be at in January. That's it. Although after that, January, I won't be nowhere else. God willing. Unless an emergency come up, and believe me, it's going to have to be an emergency. I mean, one of them fire burning emergencies. <laughs> Something that only I going to have to deal with. Otherwise than that, a brother, he'll take it up. Or we'll send some brothers. But otherwise than that, uh uh. There's only two places I'm going to be at in January. That's it. I pray that God will bless us with a steady minister right out of Newport News. I need that. I need study ministers in the Newport News area. And uh, I pray that God bless me with some. I don't want one. I want some. You know, the reason I, I don't want one. I don't like to have one minister in a place. You know, I, I want more than one. That way it kind of keeps things balanced and no, up, no one get uplifted. You got to share authority. You know, and then I love to organize a, a monitoring board. That way the minister know he got somebody to answer to. Brother Vernon, take your hat off. <laughs> you ain't looking like Clint Eastwood back there with all that hat on. Glory to God. All right, so you that, don't, you that don't have the schedules, you get it. And you'll see what areas we're going to be in. Uh, Dan, make sure you get it. Uh, uh, one area is already on the television, but the other is not. So Ron can give that today. We do hope you pray for us that God will give us a safe journey into India and Asia. I'm thankful for God opening up the doors of Asia, but I have a lot of mixed feelings about this trip. I really do. I have a lot of mixed feelings. One of the feelings I have is plain and simple. I don't want to go. And, you know, it's, it's a new area, but I, I really don't, I just don't want to go. But pray that God would get us in there, do his will, and then get us out. Amen. You know, on time. Yes. Amen. I want to be able to get to that plane. That's what helped Minister Nim, Joseph Nim, from getting into America. There was a, he was scheduled to fly out a certain time. A political uprising broke in Burma just that quick. Until every, guns and everything was down at the airport, no one could get on the plane. They wouldn't let no one fly in, and nobody was flying out. He was stuck. He had to wait. If I fly in, I want to fly out. At the time upon it, I want to fly out. You know, if we got to run, duck, and hide for some reason, I pray God all the brothers with us survive and be safe. I'm not trying to scare you. I live a realistic life. I don't live a cartoon life. No, this is real. The traveling we do and the things that we face, I'm telling you right now, it's real. It ain't something that you watch on television. This is real, Jack. When people get in behind you and want to kill you and want to cut your head off. All right. Someone said, stand and pray. All right. You stand and pray. I'll run and pray. <laughs> know what I mean? If you want to stand and pray, fine. I will not argue with you. You pray there. I pray all the way down there. And pray. I do hope that somewhere in the middle, our prayers will meet. <laughs>
you know, but I'm going to watch and pray. I'm going to watch yards away. I want to see a real man and God won't run. Where you read that at? Where that scripture? Where that scripture? Where that scripture at? I ain't never read that. I'll show you the book where men did run. And hid. They, Paul was in a basket. The same apostle that dead angels to preach. Angel come from heaven. Hey, Paul, where you at? I'm in a basket. <laughs> if an angel come from heaven and bring in the other gospel. Yo, Paul, what? Where are you? I'm in a basket. Being lowered out of a window. Hiding. Men of God hid in caves. Some things I say may tickle you, but brother, when something get in behind that's going to take your life, all that laughing goes. Even if you got feet problems, healing will come. Yes, it will. I remember when my brother was living, Brother Edward, and uh, he wanted to go with me on an overseas trip. And he said, bro, thank God. He said, man, I want to go with you. He said, but if we got to run, don't leave me. I said, Ed, he said, I got bad feet. I said, Ed, you probably beat me at a point before I get there. This traveling and facing death is very real. Very, very real. I never know when I'm coming back to First Church or have to be shipped back. So while some of you look at it from a very easy perspective, sometimes I often say to Dan, I don't believe that some folk really come to grips with what this really consists of. Who do you know on television preach like this? And preach hard and not afraid? No, people will kill you just because they hate you. I meet people by the hundreds who come embrace me because they enjoy the program. Well, just like people embrace you that enjoy it, they come kill you because they hate it. I experienced that. A man tried to take my life in Newport News with a hunter's knife. Tried to cut my, tried to, tried to cut my chest open. He didn't come to shave my face. You don't shave with a hunter's knife? No. I was on my way back to the hotel and I noticed a car kept following me. So I deliberately went away. I ain't had to go. I deliberately went around certain streets, you know, follow me. Pull up to the gas station, pump my gas, fella pull up, open his, you know, door. <laughs> you took my woman. I'm like, who, me, who, who are you? I don't know you. He said, you Pastor Dennis? I said, yes. You preach against remarriage and divorce. My wife left me. I said, sir, well, your beef is not with me. Your beef is with God. Well, he couldn't see God. He saw me pumping gas. So when he stepped out that car and he kept going up, 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 way taller than I am, looking like he's pushing close to 300, a bald head, his head was like a, a giant llama bean. Yo, know, this man three and four, five times my size, man. I do my body. I don't mind body boxing. I come up with that. But I got sis enough to know my, my, my frame, he, I mean, he going to brush off. What well, his, I throw at his body. He'd be like, my mosquito bite them. <laughs> you know? And I wasn't going to let him wrestle me. I wasn't stupid. I was street smart. You let a man that size wrestle you. What for? Someone said, why run? If you got a hunter's knife, obviously you know how to use it. Why would I run with leather sole shoes? Where am I going to get to? I said, Pat, you need to pray. You're right, but I didn't think of it. So I don't believe in trying to project something I'm not. I didn't think of it. Yeah, but see, when he started talking, he was talking to Pastor Jennings. But when that hunter knife swung on me, he swung on Gino. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, he swung on Gino. See, I kept, I keep it real. I wasn't down there. Oh, Jesus, do something, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No. See, I was, I, I, I waited on the Lord. 
You know, but Gino stepped in. You know? That hunter's knife, man, that blade was yay long. And the blade like was about as wide as my hand. And he was swinging all while, and I the sound of that thing, when it first swung past me, it whistled. Whew, just straight. I'm like, oh, oh, Jack, oh. Right then, Pastor Jennings, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, Pastor Jennings, he, he may went and sat in the car somewhere. It was just Nick and him. It was Huntington Park, where I was from, and Newport News. Jack kept it real, man. And when he swung the second time, I felt all Huntington Park. I can tell from my body motion. It was number Huntington Park. I just started bobbing the wheel. I'm like, oh, something, something got to give. And I wasn't, the Lord rebuke you. No. <laughs> See, some folk act, get this over-righteous way about them. And get, oh, I never do this. I don't get into that. I don't never do. No, I ain't getting it. No, I, I don't do that. No. See, I, I, I ain't going to tell you, you know, if you bother my wife, I'm, I'm just going to stand there and pray. Because I, I'm not a violent man. I'm a very peaceful fellow. I don't like violence. I don't advocate violence. That's why I try to stop it. <laughs> so when, I mean, when he started swinging on me, you know, I, I bobbed and weaved, but I knew that couldn't go on with a man I'm with 300 pounds. And he charging at you swinging wild. When he swing wild, he would get off balance. So then I had to use street smarts. Use this off balance to my advantage. I had to use his weight against him. You know, so when he swung and whatnot, and I'm ducking, I tried to just use my speed. I just wanted to close his eyes. I got to hit do something. So I agreed to make some modifications. <laughs> hey, most preachers wouldn't tell you that. But I was I keep it real with you. I had to make some modifications, man. Every time he swing and it was wild, I was on the side of him. Pow! <laughs> he swung again all wild on the pow. Until I started getting red, I felt like I was hitting the wall. <laughs> Swing all while again, pop, pop, pow. Before you know it, that I was closed. And I just stayed on that blind side. By that time, by that time, when you don't want the police, when you need the police, they ain't nowhere around. When you don't want them, they're right there. You know, like when you're speeding. <laughs> by that time, hey, you got a crowd of people. There was two females inside the gas station in their crowd. Did I do something? Did I do something? Did I do something? I mean, I'm like, I mean, everybody's folks stand out there. You know, and at the time, I'm not worrying about my face is seen on television. I'm worrying about living. And that one eye just made him more mad. He swung wild and got real off balance, and I rolled and stepped in back of him and guided him while he was bent and just guided him with momentum right into the corner, the gas pump. I, well, all the might I had until that shoulder dropped, disconnected. You could see it just drop. That didn't stop him. He was like a bull from Mexico. I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, because by that time, man, you... You huffing and puffing, backing up. <laughs> like you wrestling the angel. <laughs> you know, so he still ain't stopped. He's, you know, he came out of the game. And that's when I concluded somebody gonna have to bring all things to an end. And I knew my life was not designed to end at a gas station. <laughs> my life wasn't designed for that. No. 
So his shoulder was dislocated. And and when he started swinging again, I forgot what kind of movement I'd done with my body, but I managed to get in back of him and got a hold of the arm that was dislocated and took all 168 pounds of my weight and dropped it on the back of his elbow until the whole elbow just went up <clears throat> that way. By that time, the blade hit the ground and so did he. And I'm back on the car just huffing. <sighs> See, when that adrenaline wear off, you tired. But when that adrenaline kicking, you like, yeah, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, no, Jack. Then the police come up. Traditionally late like the cavalry. And wouldn't you know they recognize who I was? <laughs> Fellow walk over, please walk up to me. Please ask some different ones questions. You know the paramedics? I want the paramedics. It was so funny. The paramedics thought that the guy was in a car accident. <laughs> Paramedic asks, you know what happened? You know, the folks come around, what does that, this is what that happens. So Paramedic asks me, he's like, you did that? I said, yeah. <laughs> he looked at me, he said, but he's bigger than you. I said, yeah, I know that. <laughs> he said, you, you did that? I said, yeah. I said, the man wanted to kill me. What do you think I'm going to do? He said, man. Police come up. One the statement, another police recognized who I was. He said, aren't you Pastor Jennings? See, right then I got shame, you know. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was him, yeah. I was all shame. I was like a little boy. I was like. <laughs> and, uh. Then the police is like, this is what I'm talking about. Give your life for the gospel. I said, I ain't ready, I ain't ready to die now. <laughs> I am, I'm, not, I'm not ready to die now. So the sergeant's like, well, look, we're going to have to take a statement where you stand. I said, hey, I'm, I'm right over there, man. He said, well, hey, give us your room or whatnot. We're going to stop by. So they stopped over. But when we talked, he said, you're going to press charges? I said, no. He said, what? I said, I ain't going to press those charges, man. The guy, his beef really wasn't with me, per se. His beef was with this. You know, that, that's his beef. He said, you gonna press no charges? I said, no, nah, I ain't gonna press no charges, man. You know, send him to jail, what for? You know, perhaps he'll get his life straight and get something to go, you know. He was like, wow, wow, he was a good man. I said, well, whatever. Called my wife. She said, hey. I said, hey. <laughs> she said, how was service? I said, well, you know, we had a good time. And I, I, I didn't tell her, I, 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 don't, I didn't tell her what happened until like a long while. I just told her, I said, well, you know, sometimes you gotta fight the devil, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't do no good to tell her. If I would have told her what happened, all I would have heard was, Gino, oh my God, oh my God. No, no, I'm glad I was alone. Because if my wife and family was there, that would put me in a crazy position. Because hey, he could have he attacked my wife, he could have attacked my children, then somebody really would have got hurt. That would have put me in a very awkward position. I'm glad that brothers of the security team wasn't there. Because then it really would have been a, a very interesting beatdown. Like Rodney King. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, if one person jump on me, I, I can handle myself. Now, if a gang of them jump on me, don't stand back and tell me to endure. You do something. Pastor Jenny, be an example. And all you hear is. <laughs> Pastor Jenny is an example. He's suffering. No, you don't help me, you're going to suffer. <laughs> yeah, that's the way that is, Jack. You're going to suffer. <laughs> Y'all be praying for one for another. Please pray for us as we travel from place to place, people. I'm telling you, Burma will be the most dangerous country we would have ventured in thus far. Going in is one thing. Coming out, that's the task. This is the most 
uh, tedious place I would have ever been. I have never been to a place where going out is difficult. Coming out of Burma will be difficult. Only way it don't be difficult, God somehow by his great power make everything be smooth. But, and I pray that's exactly how things go. We don't know how the phone lines are over there. Uh, we may not even be able to call anyone about nothing. I may not even be able to call home. Because the places we go to in the world sometimes do not have the finest hotels. Some places we stay in, there are no hotel, there's no phones in the hotels, period. None. There's no hotels, there's no room service, there's insect infested beds. It ain't, it ain't always no luxury. When I was in Santa Leon, I stayed at a, supposed to be, I think, a three or four star hotel. When I got there, there was no stars on the hotel. None. <laughs> No. The bed was covered in ants and I didn't know it until I got in it. I started scratching. Man, you would have thought I was a dog with fleas. I jumped up. I'm like, dang. Looked at my headboard. Ants just covering the wall. Marching. Ha! <laughs> you turn the shower on and take a shower, your water come out brown. Tell you, it ain't fun, man. It is not fun. When I was in Sierra Leone, brother, I almost broke down crying several times sitting in my hotel room. I was, and I was there for so long. I, I several times almost cried. Actually, almost cried. I did not want to be there. I started hating the place. I did not want to be there. There was nothing to eat. Nothing. Nothing to eat. Your water was brown. It was four hours going just to preach and four hours coming back. When you got out the truck, you was covered in red dust from a red clay dirt road. It was exhausting. And yet we got to go back again. This time to about three and four countries in about two weeks. Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Liberia, and thank Ghana. All areas. So it's a lot of work. Brothers, you must work from the heart. Don't be afraid to work. Don't be afraid to sacrifice. Any way you can be a help to the church, do it to the best of your ability. Any way you don't tell Pastor Jennings to get rest if you're problematic. It can't happen. Be cooperative one to the other. Trivial matters, please straighten out among yourselves. <laughs> Little gripes and stuff, straighten out among yourselves. Don't call me. Don't run to me for every little thing. You got an argument with a brother, you set up with the brother. Don't call me. You got a conversation with the sister, you settle between you and her alone, like the book says. Settle the matter. You know, let, let 09 be peaceful. Let it be peaceful and restful. If you don't rest, let me get some. Don't keep me up because you want to stay up. To our ministers, we thank you for laboring faithfully and the cooperation that you strive to have among yourselves. Be faithful, be humble. Strive to learn one another. Brothers and sisters in the different temples that may not understand the brothers, to please don't label them and think they got something against you because something may be taught that hits you. The word of God hit all of us. It hits me. But we have to strive to live by it and try to what? Grow by the same. All right. We're going to ready to let you get out of here. And we love all of you. We thank God for all of you that made it out. We know you're tired, but you'll be all right. I'm more tired than you are. I mean, hey, you wouldn't even be going home now normally, would you? You'll be up partying and drinking. How many sneak into a party after the night, after the service? You going to party? After all this message, you still going to party? You going to play with the devil still? You still want to play with the devil? No, nah, you don't want to go party, man. No, nah, you don't want to do that. Party and God don't mix. No. Nah. 
Partying God don't mix, brother. You got to want to change that lifestyle. That lifestyle will kill you. I mean, it will kill you. It'll put you in a pine box where next time you wake up, you standing before your judge, God himself. No, nah, man. Skip your party. You may live longer. Go there. May end your life. Let's get ourselves back home and get home safely. All right?